worship. Let's go ahead and stand up on our feet as we sing. Let's sing Hark the Herald. The Hark the Herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the skies with angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem hark the herald angels sing glory to the new in glory. Glory to the King. Keep singing. Glory to the King. Glory to the King. Glory to the King. Come on. Church, it is good to be here with you. Special welcome to our guests this morning. I saw a bunch already. Maybe it's your first time here. By the way, we don't do this every Sunday, okay? I just want y'all to know this. It's called Jingle Jam for a reason because we're going to have a great time worshiping Jesus and we're just ringing bells. So you guys already figured that out when you see the bells icon on the screen. Uh, there you go. It must be up there. I love it. And you'll ring the bells. Hey, uh, today's a, a, a unique search. We always try to uh, keep uh, uh, fresh and new ideas for you as we look at Jingle Jam. And so today, you're gonna see uh, opportunity for us to use all the brand new technology we got with our LED wall and the lights and all different things as well. Uh, you're gonna see the nativity told today through a series of vignettes of, of a modern day Christmas pageant by the characters as they are typecasted into the story of the nativity. And um, interwoven throughout the whole service is gonna be scripture. Scripture that reinforces the whole story of, of the birth of Jesus, because that's why we're here. Yeah, you know, we can have fun with all the bells, we can have fun with the celebration, we can have a jingle jam, we can have great activities afterward, but today is all about Jesus as well. Most important, it's all about Jesus. And so I, um, I wanna tell you, have fun. Some of you, this is a little bit out of your comfort zone, but look around, you'll see joy in the faces of everyone else. So let that joy permeate in you too. So turn that frown upside down and let's have some joy uh, with Jesus today. Let's start with a word of prayer. Gracious Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for all the folks that are here today, our guests and our members and celebrate the life that we have in you. Lord, we thank you that you came as the, the babe in Bethlehem, but that, Lord, you grew up. 
and that you died and that you rose and that you reign victoriously and that we have life in you because of that. So Lord, even if this isn't the most wonderful time of the year, even if it's hard for us to have joy in our lives, remind us, Lord, that joy is about a relationship with you. So thank you for this time of worship and praise. For we ask it in your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, and let's continue singing. We have her on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strength. Come on! Strains prolong what the gladsome tidings be, which inspire your heavenly song. To Bethlehem and see him whose birth the angels sing. Come adore on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Come on. to be seated. Hey, I did uh, fail to mention to you, near the end of the service, we are going to have a special children's message, and so uh, kids hang out for that as well uh, this morning. Hey, as, as part of our service, to, to continue to theme the whole thing out, um, I want to share with you, uh, we're going to continue our worship with our offerings right now, so us prepare themselves to receive the offering. I want to share with you a couple of things. A, uh, the different ways that you can support the mission and ministry here at Gloria Day. Um, online, in person. Um, I gotta tell you something, we'll, we'll, you, you'll hear more about this. But because of your generosity, because of what you guys did, uh, there was a Christmas store here this past Wednesday night. And I'm just now hearing the stories of life change and impact that happened 
because of that Christmas store. For those of you who don't know what happened, we had an Amazon wish list. We had gifts bought from a tree, um, and the needs were bought off the tree, and then gifts once, fun stuff, was bought off the Amazon wish list. And we had, I'm going to get the number wrong. There was like a, there was a bunch of people here, okay, 150 plus were here. And there were tears that were being shed because there were gifts that what we did is we offered up this store, brand new gifts that the parents could buy at, at reduced cost, like five bucks, 10 bucks. And many of these families have never been able to buy gifts for their kids before. We wanted them to have some skin in the game, some ownership and, and feel like they had been a part of it. That wouldn't have happened without your generosity. And it was, it was folks from, from, from Whitcomb Elementary it was folks here from Gloria Day and our surrounding community. And it was a powerful statement of what God can do in and through you that y'all aren't even aware of. So thank you for your generosity. The other one I wanna share you with is, uh, we got this amazing event coming up in January. I know Christmas hasn't happened yet, but we got a plan for stuff around here. And I wanna invite Renee Page forward. She is our Women's Discipling Coordinator. And she's gonna share with you about this amazing event called Fresh Grounded Faith that you ladies are gonna to wanna to be a part of. So Renee, would you thank you first of all for being here, Renee. If y'all haven't met Renee, she is amazing. She is a, um, yes. <laughs> and she's mortified right now that I'm saying this because she's all about Jesus and reflects everything back to the Holy Spirit. And so, um, but it's okay for them to clap for you because God can use you as a vessel. I want you to know that as well. It is a joy to have Renee on staff. So Renee, share with us what's going on with Fresh Ground of Faith. Great, thank you very much. My name is Renee Page. I'm the Women's Discipling Coordinator here. And like he said, I am up here to tell you about the Fresh Grounded Faith event that we have coming up in January. So you might be wondering why, I mean, it's not even Christmas, why are we announcing this event now? And there are a couple of reasons. And one of them is we really just wanna make sure you have plenty of time, that you know about the event, that you can mark your calendars for it, invite your friends and get your tickets. So what Fresh Grounded Faith event? It's a big event. It's a two-day event that actually takes place all over the country. So when this event comes here in January, after that, it's gonna to go to Georgia, Mississippi, South Carolina, and Florida, just to name a few of the states that it's going to go to. So this is a big event. So what is it? Fresh Grounded Faith is Jennifer Rothschild's event, and she brings guests with her. Who we will have is we'll have Jennifer Rothschild, we'll have Laura Story, and we'll have Michael O'Brien right here on this very stage. And if you're not familiar with Jennifer Rothschild, she's an author, she's a Bible study leader, and she's a speaker. If you've ever listened to the IF gathering, she's usually one of the speakers there, and she kind of stands apart from some of the other speakers because Jennifer Rothschild is blind, and that does feed into some of her, some of her testimony. And so um, one of the things that sets this event apart is just the pure size of it. So while Gloria Day is the host church, what you may not know is we are actually partnering with nine other local churches. So right now, this minute, we have 120 volunteers from 10 different churches coming together to put on this event. We have 24 teams that will do everything from serving beverages, selling books, uh, and greeting women as they come into this church. Now we have plenty of female volunteers, but we do need about a dozen men to serve on our uh, security and our parking teams. So if that is you, then you could reach out to me through the front desk uh, or just uh, send me an email. Uh, our goal for this event is to fill this worship center with at least 800 women from all over Houston. We already have groups of women coming from Katy, Stafford, and Galveston, just to, just to give you an idea of how the word is getting out to churches all over. At this point, we have sold nearly 600 tickets. So that's a one reason to stand up here now in December in, uh, you know, before we get into the busy part of the season to make sure you have a chance to get your tickets now um, because there is a chance that this event sells out. Um, this event is perfect for any woman, whether she goes to church or not. And it's also great for girls age 12 and up. We're gonna come together, we're gonna have wonderful worship music, we're gonna hear great testimonies, we're gonna laugh together, we're gonna learn together. It's gonna be a fabulous event. So the other reason we're telling you this now is to get your tickets at gdlc.org forward slash women and tickets would make an excellent Christmas present. So thank you very much.
Renee, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Uh, one of the things why I wanted to share this with you now is because your offerings are subsidizing this event. Because if you go to gdlc.org, there's a ticket price that's different than if you go to Fresh Ground and Faith. And so we're trying to make the tickets uh, affordable for everybody as well, uh, for ladies. This is a ladies event, guys. This is something your wife can be, uh, or your spouse can be a, um, a great blessing for them, or your mom, or your, your grandmother. Uh, great opportunity, I love what she said too, is a great opportunity for uh, a Christmas gift for them as well. GDLC.org for more information. Um, so again, thank you for your generosity. Pray about going to this event, ladies. I think it'd be a great blessing for you as well. I invite the ushers now to receive the offering. This is the story of a ragtag bunch of church members who set out to perform a Christmas play and the director who tried his hardest to just keep it all together. The glory of Christmas. Hi, my name's Joel. I'm the director of our church play, The Glory of Christmas. 
This is my 12th year. We're okay. Just the stained glass window. It's going great. Uh, the only thing that we lacked was uh, someone to play the role of Mary up until yesterday. But then I found her. And she, she's perfect. I got the role of Mary because I'm 31 weeks pregnant. Yep, two kids in college and then surprise! We're just so, we're so full of joy. I, I can't act, Joel. There's no way I can sell this. No, 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 not true. Your audition was fantastic. How can it be me? How can I be highly flavored by God, did I just say flavored? Why can't I stop talking about food? Uh, She's ooh. perfect. Oh, hey, you're, you're Joseph. Mm-hmm. I'm Heather. I play Mary, your wife. Oh! Mm-hmm. I remember you. Oh? You played Bunko with my mom. You know, what is Bunko? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nice to meet you. Mm -mm. You must mentally sink into her situation. Yes, yes. Go spend the night in a barn somewhere. The hay will trigger something deep within you. Sorry. Yeah, it'll trigger something. Trigger something that don't need a hand in histamine. Mm. This is good. I'm the least likely person to play Mary, let alone deliver the Son of God. I'm a middle-aged former soccer mom. And the truth is that this baby disrupted some pretty amazing plans we had for our lives. Things we've been looking forward to for years. Okay, Mary and Joseph, let's take it back to scene 11. Scene 11, please. Maybe that's how Mary felt. Maybe people stared, unsure of what to tell her. Maybe she doubted. Maybe she doubted, even though God told her not to fear. And then she trusted. She trusted, she trusted that what God was doing would bring the greatest kind of joy if she would just let go, let go of her plans, her questions, and there we go. Just let the good shepherd carry you. <laughs> let the good shepherd carry me. In the sixth month after Elizabeth had become pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, the town in Galilee. He was sent to a virgin. The girl was engaged to a man named Joseph. He came from the family line of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel greeted her and said, the Lord has blessed you in a special way. He is with you. Mary was very upset because of his words. She wondered what kind of greeting this could be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high God. The Lord God will make him a king like his father David of long ago. The Son of the Most High God will rule forever over his people. They are from the family line of Jacob. That kingdom will never end. How can this happen? Mary asked the angel. I'm a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come to you. The power of the Most High God will cover you. So the Holy One that is born will be called the Son of God. Your relative Elizabeth will have a child, even though she's old. 
People thought she could not have children, but she has been pregnant for six months now. That's because what God says will always come true. I serve the Lord, Mary answered. May it happen to me just as you said it would. Then the angel left her. the Christmas nativity play, The Glory of Christmas, I play Joseph. That's right. I was born to play this role. Joseph has no clue what to do when it comes to babies. So in order for him to play the role of Joseph, we got him an infant simulator doll from the local home act teacher. So, you know, he could practice a bit. Insane shrieks, dear baby. It's a burp. Needs to burp. Oh, so put your fingers under and try to 
find the... Where's the spine on this thing? I don't know. And check the front. Joseph is terrified. I don't blame him. I mean, babies don't even have kneecaps. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Burping like a boss? Uh, yeah, way to go, fake dad. I heard things may not be going so well with the infant simulator doll. Hey, Joseph, your mom's here to pick you up. Yeah, coming. As you can see, my mom's house is full of antiques. So I did what any good home economics teacher would do. I sent Joseph home with a, a baby egg. I think about Joseph, like Bible Joseph, a lot. to really dig deep and find his, his compassion and his understanding, because he really, really loved her. My dear Mary, it is going to be a long journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem for the census, especially with your belly being so humongous. With, 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 with child, Joseph, the line is being with child. <sighs> right. Sorry, ma'am. Is the age difference what's bothering you? I want you to know, it doesn't bother me. It's, 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 okay, please people, let's just take it from the top. I understand that Joseph is radically underqualified for all he's about to encounter. But isn't that the type of people God uses? The most unlikely folks to do the biggest things? Yeah. <laughs> Seems like those are the ones he always picks. Because he's a God that'll never give up on us. Ah! Ha ha! Yes! Ha ha! I have swaddled! Ha! Ha This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary and Joseph had promised to get married, but before they started to live together, it became clear that she was going to have a baby. She became pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph was faithful to the law, but he did not want to put her to shame in public, so he planned to divorce her quietly. But as Joseph was thinking about this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. The angel said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. The baby inside her is from the Holy Spirit. She's going to have a son. You must give him the name Jesus. That's because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to bring about what the Lord had said would happen. He had said through the prophet, the virgin is going to have a baby. She will give birth to a son and he will be called Emmanuel. The name Emmanuel means God with us. Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded him to do, and he took Mary home as his wife. I invite you to stand up as we sing. No crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet hill. The stars in the sky look down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. The cattle are lowing, the baby awakes but little Lord Jesus no crying he makes I love thee Lord Jesus look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh come on it's free Angels are singing, and I know the reason the Savior is born. It's Christmas, the bells are ringing, and I feel like shouting, joy to the world. 
longest running cast member of the Nativity Ensemble of our church. Well, I don't like to mention it, but I am a formally trained prodigy of the theater arts. Having Dan as part of our cast is fantastic. Lord, I am surely blessed beyond measure. Okay, uh, okay, good, uh, head, head. Let's, uh, let's just, let's do it again. But this time with more emotion, okay? Hey, I want you to Meryl Streep this up, okay? You got it. Dan thinks he's helping, but all he does is compare everything to Meryl Streep. Tony, I need you to channel your inner Meryl. My dear Mary, stop. It is... Just, I need to Meryl this over for a minute. Oh. This is no way to treat your actors. Meryl would have seen this and walked immediately. Really, Dan? Because this potato salad looks so Meryl right now. Suddenly, the most splendiferous heavenly being appeared to my cohorts and me. Stick to the script, please. OK, Joel, it's called the glory of Christmas. I think the shepherds deserve a little more poetic language, don't you think? <sighs> it's the Bible, Dan. God may beg to differ with you. By day, I make a living as an accountant, but a dedicated one. But a dedicated actor must lose themselves and fully become the character. Right. Do you have any questions for me at all? Uh, what's that smell? Green pastures. Green pastures, Annette. I am so method. I haven't bathed in a month. You really need to take a bath. I can't. These shepherds were society's misfits. You know, they were, sure, transfixed by um, a, a choir of angels, but also amazed that God had chosen them. They were the scrawny kid in P.E. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, the nerd who went alone to the prom. Yeah, they were, um, they were the Glee Club president. Twice. Yeah. They were the least of these. God asked me to 
be the keeper of the most important message that's ever been kept. To tell everyone that he sent the greatest gift ever, the Prince of Peace. The lowest in the land is given the highest honor. What's that smell? <laughs> there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby. It was night and they were taking care of their sheep. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news. It will bring great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Here is how you will know I am telling you the truth. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly a large group of angels from heaven also appeared they were praising God. They said, may glory be given to God in the highest heaven and may peace be given to those he is pleased with on earth. Joyful and triumphant, O come, ye, O come, ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. Sing all the citizens of heaven above. Glory to God, all glory in the highest. Oh, come, let us adore. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore.
there's a little bit of controversy over my choice to cast Tony as the wise man in our church nativity play because, well, Tony can sometimes be... Yep, that's... That's some good birch. Birch. Why would they use birch? It's not even indigenous to Israel. Did Tony's just a little bit of a know-it-all. Hmm. Did Acacia not even cross your mind? That's probably Birch. Potato salad is of German origin, brought over here by European settlers. You know, fascinating point. The carb load on that is 37 grams. Great for uh, marathon runners. There's no doubt that Tony knows a lot of useless facts. But when he doesn't know something, now, of all the wise men's gifts, myrrh was the most profound. He's used to prepare a body for burial. What does real myrrh smell like? Uh, I imagine it has like a lush floral scent. Nah, it's woodsy. Warm, aromatic, musky. Oh, uh, my mom leads the essential oils small group. Mm. But there's a certain something about Tony, something that he doesn't even see about himself. Put your shoulder into it so it doesn't strip the head. Hey, well done. That's good. Good job. Tony has the kind of heart that understands where the real treasures are. What they are, who they are. And he understands the King of Kings came first as the lowly servant. This baby, this beautiful gift, this is the glory of God, the glory of Christmas, who would eventually sacrifice himself for us. For me, well, let's just say, with that kind of knowledge, you can never approach the manger quite the same way again. That's why he's the wise man. Hey, I'm gonna buy the children's, uh, children four for the children's message. Come on up, kids. Come on up. bunch of us here, aren't there? It's awesome. Keep coming. Man. Wow, some of y'all want to come on over here? So you can, make sure everybody can see you. If you want to sit up here, you can sit up here too. I won't bite, I promise. I don't think. Well, good morning, everybody. How you been having fun ringing your bells? It's kind of fun doing it. You know, we've also been telling the story of Jesus, haven't we? Have you been seeing, we've been using different characters that are doing a modern Christmas nativity, and they were telling the story of Jesus in their own special way. Do y'all know that y'all can tell the story of Jesus in your own special way as well? And it has to do something with these bells. These bells that you have, I got a special bell here. It's a pretty cool bell. You hear how it sounds? Doesn't that sound like a sleigh ride? Y'all wouldn't know what that is. Unless we have like a truck pulling it. Okay. It sounds like jingle bells? It does. So it's pretty cool, isn't it? You know how it makes a sound? You see these round balls right here? There's a metal ball inside of that. And so when I shake it up, 
it makes noise. Isn't that kind of cool? The bells that you guys have in your hands too, the bell ones, not the ones with a clanger on it, but with a bell inside of a ball, it hits and it makes a noise. Now let me ask you a question. What if you think it's gonna happen if I take this blanket and I cover it up? What do you think is gonna happen? It, it, there's still the same vibration. There's still balls are in there. Ready? It really doesn't make much noise at all, does it? It's comp well. No, I just put a blanket around it. All I did was cut. You know what? This time of year, at Christmas, there's a bunch of things going on in y'all's lives. There's like Christmas lists. There's excitement about gifts. Some of you have Elf on a Shelf, and some of you get all excited about all kinds of stuff, and you get all excited. And sometimes, you know what happens? We get so excited about all the things about Christmas that we actually forget why we're celebrating in the first place. And you see, these bells are an opportunity for us to ring with joy about the birth of Jesus. There's a great verse in Luke chapter two. The angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of what? Great joy. Do you guys know that you can let people see joy in you by how you talk, how you listen, and how you share Jesus, especially when your parents might be a little stressed out. You know what? You might actually ask them if they, you can help out the house. Or maybe you can go clean your room. How about that? That'd be a big deal. Because you know when we do that, there's also, I didn't tell the guys up front or back there about hiding our light because when we hide our light, we're not letting it shine. But when we let the bells ring, other people hear us, other people see us, and they get to hear about the Christmas joy because you know what? In Luke 2.11, we know that they, the angels told the shepherds, for unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. And the shepherds came to see Jesus. And you know what they did? They worshiped him. And then they left doing something different. They didn't have bells. But the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. That's kind of like this bell. You can let people know that you love Jesus by how you live your life. And you can also tell them about Jesus. So I have for you something special. You know, you guys are giving a bunch of bells. But I have, and notice it's the end of the service, I'm giving this to you. So mom and dad can have fun with it. This is Jingle with Joy for Jesus. And I want each of you guys to have one. I've asked two special guys, and they're gonna help you hand it out. They're both over here, one's over here, and one's over here. And so when they're gonna come forward, and we're gonna pray first, and they're gonna be able to get, I have some up here, but you can get one from them as well. And I wanna tell you guys, I pray you have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas, and I can't wait to see you back here again next Sunday and then also on Christmas Eve. Can you guys pray with me? You fold your hands. Would you pray it after me? Hey, how about moms and dads and everybody else in the congregation repeat after me as well? Let's all pray together. Dear Jesus, thank you for coming as a baby to be born in my place, to take away my sin, and to die on the cross that I can live with you forever. Help me let my light shine and ring with joy. Oh, it's all about you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, guys, thanks so much. You can go back to your seats, okay? Here, you want one of these? There's more on the side.
And when you get back to your seats, we will share with you our last vignette. Our annual Christmas show is tonight, and all the hard work, the blood, sweat, and tears comes down to this very moment. And like, like any show, there's going to be some last-minute snafus. Um, like, like, for example, my middle-aged Mary, she's been having contractions for about six, 16 hours. My Joseph hasn't memorized all his lines. Uh, Amy? Mary, my, <laughs> my dear Mary, it's been a long journey. My wise man is convinced that the nativity set will collapse. And my shepherd can't find a lemon for his tea. Articulatory agility as a marvelous ability, manipulating with dexterity. That... We are telling the most beautiful and important story that's ever been told about an event that changed the world. We've lost the lamb. Mm -hmm. Quick, everyone make lamb noises. Call her back to the flock. He knows the lamb's a dog, right? Medical experts actually do not recommend this method for uh, dealing with panic attacks. But my mom recommends lavender behind the ears. Get away from me. I'm calling an ambulance. I think I'll be fine. It's for me. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Thank you guys so much for coming. All right, this is everyone. It's time. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, and unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. I have this long-held tradition, I guess you could call it. Every year during the performance, I, uh, I step off the stage and leave the building. I just want God to do what God does. And the shepherds came with haste, and they, they found, found Mary, Mary and Joseph, Joseph and the and baby the lying in the manger. It doesn't matter where you see the nativity story, whether it's on a street corner or, or in a church or even on your neighbor's mantle. When you see it, you, you have to consider it then and there. Are you willing to kneel at the manger? Will you believe in the miracle of Christmas, the glory of Christmas? Trust that this is the way that God chose to save us all. And all who heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned. Glorifying and worshiping God for all the things that they have seen and heard as it was said unto them. Amen. allow this message of Christmas to transform you. We've had a great service. We got to ring the bells. We got to sing some carols. But how will this message 
transform you like the shepherds who return to their jobs, their boring, monotonous, dead-end jobs, but somehow changed. They left glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and they had heard. I love that we do this service in the middle of December. It tells the whole Christmas story, but it's part of Advent because how many of y'all, don't raise your hands, are already crazed out and done? This is why we do what we do. Don't lose focus. Can you this week go back to what you're doing, but do it somehow transformed? glorifying and praising God for all the things that he has done for us in Jesus. I wanna say thank you to Matt Kortz, our contemporary worship director, for putting this whole worship service together. Matt, thank you. Great job, buddy. Really appreciate you. And before I send you out into all the activities out, outside, and a um, couple things, this Wednesday, we have a blue Christmas service. A lot of people wonder, what, what is that? Is it just for gloomy people? No, it's not just for gloomy people. Because here's what you have to realize, that Christmas right this year may not be the most wonderful time of the year for you because maybe you lost a loved one. And maybe you're struggling and everybody around you is doing all kinds of stuff. This is a service that gives you a chance to experience the, the glory of Christmas in a, in a fresh new way and in a way that maybe prepares you to come back for Christmas Eve. So I invite you to maybe bring a friend, a neighbor who you know has lost a loved one or someone who's struggling with, with, with depression or loss or grief or, or some kind of pain in their life. And I'd love to have you be here for that service. And the next Sunday, next Sunday, I mean, it's a flip. We go from um, jingle, jingle, jingle to now uh, a wonderful retelling again of creation to redemption through a thing called Lessons and Carols. But I'm gonna ask our director of traditional worship, Derek Brady, if he'd come forward and share with you why this is such an important thing for y'all to be at. Derek. Good morning. So as I was saying back there, and blessed we are here at Glory Day that we have and can offer different styles of expression of worship. Yes. And today, we went through Jingle Jam together, fun, and, and, but ultimately, the worship of yes. God. Next week, Lessons and Carols is a different expression. Same story, the same God, just a different way of expressing the birth of Christ through nine lessons, scriptures, and then the choir, the bell choir, and guest orchestra will lead us in worship, singing of carols, uh, new carols that you may not have heard. And then afterwards, there, there's the Star of Wonder Christmas party with birthday cake and uh, food and festivities and just a, a great big party as we continue to celebrate this Christmas season. So we hope you are here next Sunday, 10 a.m. here in the Worship Center for Lessons and Carols. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. It's a great service again. Um, if maybe the bell's for you a little auto um, uh, overload, sensory overload, uh, that next service will be a beautiful opportunity uh, to sing and celebrate the, from Genesis 3.15 all the way through uh, redemption story, Jesus victorious on Easter. And it's something that you, would you probably should invite your friends to as well. Uh, it's one of those things that we do, um, you, it'll be a great opportunity to tell the story in another way. Hey, I want to remind you also, Christmas Eve services. All the services are there, um, gdlc.org. Uh, love to have you here. Christmas Day, 10 a.m. in the chapel, okay? You know where the chapel is? You go back around over here and you come down this hallway and you'll head to the chapel, okay? Uh, also, our Jingle Jam continues. You're gonna have an opportunity to enjoy games, activities, music, fun, food in the Life Center and outside 
as we keep the joy of Christmas going. So when you leave today, a couple things I want you to get. There's a map of indoor activities and outdoor activities. Make sure you get one of those. You also will get a Christmas at Gloria Day postcard. This is Christmas Eve candlelight services and Christmas Day service, opportunity for you to hand this out to someone. And we also still have yard signs, not many, but I'm telling you, I drove down um, Space Center Boulevard the other day, and at the front of a neighborhood, there was a Christmas at Gloria Day sign, and I just said, hmm, I love that. And for some of you, this might be a big deal that you're actually putting a yard sign in your yard because uh, you're announcing to the world that your neighbors that you go to church. Is that such a bad thing? Maybe it's time to take a step. Maybe it's the time to share your faith, and they're gonna ask you, hey, what about this story? Well, you heard it today, you're gonna hear it next week. Come on, how many more times you gotta hear it? And you're gonna hear it again on Christmas Eve. And I'd love you to have them come with us next Sunday or the following Sunday as well. I believe that's all the announcements I have. I'm gonna invite the congregation to stand. Hey, it's been a real joy with you today. It's been a real blessing to celebrate this Jingle Jam with you as we have fun together and worship. But remember, it's not just for in here. Let that bell ring, let that joy shine out there. That you can glorify and praise God for all the things that you've heard and you've seen. So, but remember, you're not going alone. You're going in the name of and with the blessing of Jesus. So, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon his favor and grant you his peace now and forevermore. Amen. Let's close the song.
Jim. Amen.